Hey guys, welcome back to another video of restriction into nucleus enzymes. So in this video, we'll be further continue about the uh, other forms of restriction into nucleus enzymes and other more of its cutting sites and everything. All right. So let's move on with the uh, today's video. In this video, we'll be talking about isosomers. All right. So let's talk about the isosomers today. So basically the restriction enzymes with the same sequence specificity and cut sites are known as isosomers. All right. This is a simple definition of isosomers. These are these are restriction enzymes with the same sequence specificity. All right. It has the same sequence specificity and cut sites. All right. Are known as isosomers. All right. So this is a fairly easy thing to understand. All right. So also, for example, uh, these are the, the two types of uh, restriction endonuclease enzymes uh, which are isomers in nature as you can see uh, these are the same sequence specificity and cut sites all right so same thing in both of them and also i provided a list of isomers so you can just type this uh, url and go to the web page so that you can get uh, all of the isomers uh, all of these charts and all of the resources related to it all right so moving forward to this so let's talk about neoisomers neoisomers all right so what is neoisomers the neoisomers are enzymes that recognize the same sequence but at, but cleave at different points so this is an important point so these have same sequence just as the isomers isosomers and but these have different cleave but cleave at different points all right so these are some of the examples for these are small one and x small one so you can see the same sequence in both of them, but these have different leaving sites, leaving points. Yeah, I hope that's pretty clear. So this is a very easy thing. So moving on. With so let's talk about the star activity. All right. So talking about the star activity, uh, let's go through some of the points which are listed here. All right. So these are some of the points that I like found, which were some of the points which I have found, which are very good and beneficial for related to star activity all right so under extreme conditions such as elevated ph or low ionic strength restriction endonuclease enzymes are capable of leaving uh, sequences which are similar but not identical to their defined recognition sequence so let me read it out for you again so under extreme conditions such as elevated ph or low ionic strength Restriction endonuclease enzymes are capable of cleaving sequences which are similar but not identical to their defined recognition sequence. All right, so this altered specificity is known as starred activity. All right, so these uh, cleave at certain size which are not supposed to be cleaved but look like or which seems are uh, which seems the uh, which seems identical to the defined recognition sequence. All right. So they pretty much make a mistake due to extreme conditions such as elevated pH or low ionic strength. They cleave at points which are not supposed to be cleaved, but which seems like which are identical to the recognition sequence. Right? So the most common types of altered activity are acceptance of base substitution and truncation of number of bases in recognition sequence. Right? So for example, let's go through this example. So eco goes through the star activity which cleaves sequence the sequence where n is any base and whereas eco orbital cleaves the sequence this way all right so it cleaves a different sequence which proves to be identical to this all right all right so hope you can understand so under extreme conditions they cleave certain wrong sequences which Prove to be or which seems pretty much identical to the recognition sequences. All right, so this is a pretty simple topic which is known as the star activity. So moving on with that. Right? So as you know, as I, as I talked about the buffer uh, very leanly, but this is a very important aspect of uh, uh, considering the restriction digestion. All right, so for the activity of restriction enzyme to take place, we need to have restriction buffer. All right, so restriction buffer contains Tris HC, Tris, uh, Tris CL, not HCL, Tris CL, MDCL2, NACL, and DDT. DTT. All right. So let's talk about some of the points which are very, very important and why do we require them and why these substances are used. All right. So most restriction 
uh, endonuclease enzyme function adequately at pH 7.4, but different enzymes vary in their requirements for ionic stability provided by sodium uh, chloride, which are pretty much we know that they are ionic, they have a strong ionic strength and magnesium concentration. All type 2 dissection endonuclease enzymes require Mg2 plus in order to function. So let me just repeat this point again. You might be confused, I guess. So let me uh, repeat this again. Uh, most uh, restriction endonuclease function adequately at pH 7.4, but different enzymes vary in their requirements for ionic strength, usually provided by sodium and magnesium. So these two uh, solutions provide uh, pretty much good ionic strength. So these are known for the ionic strengths, all right? Uh, for all uh, type 2 restriction endonuclease enzymes, all right? So basically type 2 restriction endonuclease enzyme require Mg2 plus or a pretty much good ionic strength in order to function. All right. So that is why we use MgCl2. So MgCl2 is a pretty much uh, uh, variable component or import, very very important component to be used in this. So let's talk about the second point. It is also advisable to add a reducing agent which is DDT, DTT. All right. Dithiol tetri, uh, tetritol. All right. So, which stabilizes the enzyme and prevents its inactivation. All right. So, reducing agent such as DTT is very uh, much essential for uh, the presence in the enzyme, restriction enzyme buffer for stabilizing the enzyme and prevent its inactivation. All right. So, let's move to the last point, which is the providing the right conditions for the enzyme is very important. An incorrect NaCl or Mg2 plus concentration not only decrease the activity of the restriction endonuclease, but they might also cause changes in the specificity of the enzyme. So, this is a very important point that correct amount of or the or optimum amount of NaCl or Mg2 plus concentration is very much required. Otherwise, it may lead to the changes in the specificity of the enzyme, which may lead to total failure in the process of gene cloning and others, other processes. So that was it for the entire restriction endonuclease part that covers everything from top to bottom. So if you have any doubts, I can, you can just uh, type in, type your question in the comment section. I'll reply to all of your questions. So thank you for watching, watching this video. I'll meet you in the next one.